everyone. Welcome back. So I'm doing this video because I kind of want you to get a grip of what it's kind of like dealing with the lawn care industry. And so hopefully I can get this thing back up and running tomorrow. Um, however, I am going to be doing it with the less than ideal circumstances. So I'm back. Um, it's the following day after I found out basically This pulley right here, it's not going to come off. It's just way too corroded. If I do get it off, I'm going to end up destroying it. So that basically, that pulley, i got to buy a new pulley. Um, something I'd have to order, so I'm not just going to be able to jump right back into core aeration. Alright, so I just uh, finished up the massive part of the dumpster fire right now. Um, I have to figure out where, how I'm going to proceed with these aerations now, but life goes on. Everything goes on. Except that, that core aerator. So that's not going on anywhere. We have to figure out what's going on with that, um, whether it's putting a new engine on it, whether it's completely replacing the machine, whether it's setting it on fire and rolling it down a hill into a ditch. Uh, I haven't figured that out yet. Anyways, it's just time to move on to the next. This first part of the drama of the saga is over and uh, we deal with the next part. Dumpster fire number two. The core aerator. That lawn air. Okay, here it is. The six and a half horsepower, eight foot torque, 221 cc. A little under a gallon for a gas tank. That's kind of good to know, so I can figure out how much fuel I'm using. It's got this weird thing on the top. I have no idea, but it comes with a gas tank. Well, there went my breaker. I guess. Uh... I'll go flip it back on and we'll start again. Um, next step and hopefully we can finish up this, button this up and uh, finish up the dumpster fire. I hope so because I booked another core aeration for Monday and I'd like to have this for that. And I have another one in the cooker so I don't want to have to rent another machine so we will we will we'll see. So that's what it, so I got rid of a lot of the gloss paint and just covered up with matte clear coat. Um, I did get to, oh, I got them over there, uh, but I got to the braces on it. Got those all painted up, got them clear coated. The clear coat was blistering for some reason, probably because I didn't mix the can. So that's where we sit with that. And uh, let's get the brackets on there. I got back from Harbor Freight and I got all of the bracketry hardware and we can get that mounted and see if this engine will actually legit fit so we have the I don't know if you can see on the camera or not it, it, it started blistering I'm not worried about it you're not going to see these it's mainly to make sure I got paint on them so that they don't rust to pieces um, see this is the longer one so this goes on this side this one looks a lot nicer. You only see a few runs in the paint. 
This one goes on this side, so the engine's going to go on top of this. And from there, once the engine goes on top of it, you're either going to have to look underneath it to see it or take the engine off to see it. So, not too big of a deal. However, all that water and everything else will see the bottom of this and probably underneath the engine too. What I need to do? I bought washers. Lots and lots of washers. I should probably put those on. I also got the hardened lock washers. Go with the hardened bolts. And I got the hardened nuts to go with the hardened bolts. All grade eight. There we go. Now, one thing I did get to was longer bolts for the front of this. I went up a half an inch. That was the next size up. That should be funny. Right, the moment you've been waiting for. At least I've been waiting for. I don't know about you. You're supposed to let this clear coat cure for 24 hours to completely dry. None of this has been on for a complete 24 hours. The stuff on the machine is probably pretty close. The stuff on the bars, not even close. Okay, all we got left to do is snug up the bolts, make, them, make sure they're good and tight so the engine doesn't fly off, and then it should be pretty much ready to go after some adjustments of the drive belt. So I went ahead and tightened up, or adjusted the belt, and I went and I got it all tightened down on the bottom of the machine. I'm going to go pull off the tape here, see how good of a job I did on taping. There's no paint on it, that's a good thing. 
So, that looks good. All that's left to do now is um, put some gas in it and start it up. See if we can actually get some gas in it. Location's going to be an issue. Let's get it cranked up. smoking a little bit. I guess it's burning some stuff off probably. I wasn't expecting the big puff of smoke when it got started, but it makes sense. It was probably something left from manufacturing that just kind of managed to blow out. Um, I wasn't expecting it to start on the first pull. I thought I would have to prime the carburetor and I didn't have to do that, which was actually a surprise. Um, looks like everything's pretty well adjusted. I just got to get that one little uh, brace on here so that I think that actually holds the uh, belt up as well, and not just on, so that it, uh, when it's sitting in this position, loose, um, it actually is spinning this wheel, and it's not on, tight on that, that drive wheel. Other than that, it seems to be doing pretty good. It drives okay. Um, it's kind of dark out. Uh, we'll probably wait until tomorrow and see if it punches holes. So far, so good. Dumpster fire. Nearly at an end. Howdy there. So, got a new hat. You may rate all kinds of compliments in the comments section. I know it's nice. She got this hat for my dad for Christmas. Um, he really liked it. My mom, on the other hand, did not like her Christmas present. Uh, so, what I did is I found this cute little gnome that looked like it was like peeing on something. You know, over on Facebook, ordered it, sent it directly to her. You know, this is the year of COVID. We really weren't meeting for Christmas. And uh, so I was visiting them this summer and I asked my so what do you think of your Christmas present? She's just like, it was awful. Um, the thing is, is the pictures on Facebook didn't show me that it was anatomically correct. And apparently it was very graphic. So I, she wouldn't even show it to me that, that apparently that's how graphic it was. But, yeah, I, I bombed on that one. We gotta do better, I got to do better for mom this year. Maybe I have to like buy her a new car or something. I don't know. So we had, I, took it, I took the lawn air here for a spin today. Um, we had some issues. It punched holes in the ground like it's supposed to. It drove like it's supposed to. I'm probably going to have to... Uh, Throttle it down. I'm not quite used to having this kind of power out of it. But the belt kept slipping off of it. So what I did is right there, you can kind of still see the tag on it. I'll explain it better to you with better visual aids. I got a bunch of these at the hardware store. Uh, different sizes. This is the biggest one. It was actually the size below this that I used. I also got some new bolts to... Go in there, those are actually grade 5 hardened bolts because they were out of the stainless steel ones. I got the last one yesterday. But I needed to get it on there. So I put that particular guard on there because of the way that the belts move. The belts, they want to try to keep their round shape all the time. And when it, even when it's moving, it wants to keep its round shape. So when you um, stop it, it tries to bounce back into its round shape. The problem is, is that if it does that, it usually grabs on the two pulleys on the end. The one that, that's creating the power and the one that drives the power. 
the tensioner in the middle is what's actually supposed to prevent it from, you know, having too much tension. So what you have to do is you have to take it around the drive wheel and kind of get it to compress a little bit so that it, it doesn't grab on the wheel. And it, it'll pull and flow smoothly when, until you engage it with the uh, tensioner. Otherwise, your core aerator could operate when you don't want it, and that would be bad. So that one little bracket there should be what fixes it. I will try it again tomorrow. Um, it'll be Sunday. It was kind of late and dark when I finished it today after trips to the hardware store and everything else and my nice afternoon nap on the weekend. Um, what I did is I took one of these holes on the bracket, this inside one, drilled it out a little bit bigger so the bolt would go through it and just bent it where I needed it. And that was pretty much it. So I'll try it tomorrow. We'll see, make sure if the belt stays on. I hope it does. Otherwise, it's back to the drawing board. And if it isn't, we're going to let her roll. We're going to put her on the trailer and we're going to take her to work on Monday. So this is where we're at. Um, hopefully everything checks out tomorrow and I'm not losing the belt every 30 seconds or so. Or every time I basically take the my hand off the lever. Um, yeah, so this is where we're at. We're almost there. Just a test away, hopefully. Just one test. That's all I ask for is one successful test. Oh, one of the other things I also noticed, I probably did this myself, the pulley is bent. Um, I'm guessing I did that one trying to pound it on there. And frankly, I'm just going to let her roll right now because I got no other options. I'm going to eventually uh, purchase another pulley. Take this one off, put that one on properly so it doesn't bend. And like I said, eventually, so that probably means whenever this one starts creating problems is probably when I'm going to do it. I, it kind of is. That's why the belt's flying off probably is because that's, but it's also that belt's really loose without the guards on it. And yeah, just one successful test. That's all we need. One successful test and then we can let her roll and hopefully Monday... I don't have a broken machine, and I finished my aeration. All right. Well, till tomorrow. Pull on air. Um, I'm not going to be able to, it's raining outside. I'm not going to be able to plug to test that out. However, the issue was, even with the drive system, um, I would just let it go, take it off, and that's when the belt would slip. So I'm going to just do that by testing the drive system, drive it around in the rain. I shouldn't get too wet. Um, and just see if we have a fix or not. I'm hoping we do. But, yeah, well, let's find out. success. Um, the belt's not grabbing too badly. It's letting go. It's not slipping off. Um, ready to let it roll. One thing that came in today was the new hour meter, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on, and then we can call this pretty much done for the moment. Mm -hmm.